Hey guys, it's Christina and today I'm going to be sharing with you my fully raw produce storage tips. I've been living a fully raw lifestyle for almost nine years now and I have a lot of experience when it comes to ripening produce, rotating it in my fridge and getting the most amount of taste for the least amount of waste. For the past seven years I've been running a nonprofit food co-op called Rawfully Organic and I've gained so much experience when it comes to storing produce to making it last longer, and to just being able to use every single little bit of it. And so I'm here to share all of my knowledge with you. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my top six tips on how you can make your produce last just a little bit longer and make your life that much easier. Are you ready? Here are my top six fully raw produce storage tips. My first produce storage tip is to bag your greens to keep them fresh. When people first start buying produce, one of the biggest concerns that I get is that they cannot keep their greens from going wilted or that they go wilted too quickly. Something that I love to do is I love to store my greens in these produce saving bags. They can be those reusable ones, the recyclable ones, they don't need to be made of plastic. The ones that I have here are made of a recyclable corn starch that is actually biodegradable. And you can find those at shop.rawfullyorganic.com. What I like to do is I like to take my greens and I'll spritz them with water. And when I put them in the bag, I will twist the top and simply store them in the fridge. And this holds their shelf life to up to one to two weeks longer than they would if they were not in this bag. And the reason is, is that it keeps them crisp, it keeps them fresh, and it keeps them protected from all of the outdoor air, especially if you're opening and closing your refrigerator a lot. My produce saving tip number two is to learn how to rotate your food. Produce is real food. It's perishable. It's not going to last forever. And because of that, you need to learn how to properly store it and save it and rotate it. For instance, I pick up produce from my local co-op, Roughly Organic, one to two times a week. And what I like to do is I always like to put my older produce in the front of the fridge. That way I can grab that first and eat it first. And I'll put my newer produce in the back of the fridge. So what this does is it keeps me eating my riper produce first and it keeps me from having less waste in my house. So keep in mind that if you're going to buy produce today, you won't be able to eat that produce for the next four to five days because you want to give it enough time to ripen. My produce tip number three is to be sure to store your fruits and your veggies separately when needed. For instance, I like to keep a lot of my fruits outside of the fridge. And not just any fruits, but any type of sweet fruits. Fruits that I keep outside of the fridge are things like bananas, mangoes, persimmons, melons, some apples. Those types of fruits don't necessarily need to be in the refrigerator and I don't recommend that they are because it keeps them from ripening properly. Another fruit that I recommend that you never put in the fridge are tomatoes. Tomatoes ripen best outside of the fridge and that's what give them that beautiful deep plush red color and that's when they taste truly fabulous. So keep your tomatoes out of the fridge. For less sweet fruits like berries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, cranberries, or for other non-sweet fruits like cucumbers or zucchinis or bell peppers, I typically recommend that you keep those in the fridge because they are more perishable or they tend to pass more quickly. For any vegetables like dark leafy greens, broccoli, cauliflower, squashes, things like that, all of those can go inside of the fridge and I definitely recommend the bagging technique that I showed you earlier. It keeps them fresher longer. Just like any type of flower or living thing, it needs water to survive. And so what I like to do is I like to put my live herbs into a mason jar with water. That way while they're in the fridge, they can continue to drink this water and to stay crisp and fresh and alive. And plus, it looks kind of cute. <laughs> if you're one of those people that likes to prepare your meals the day before, you can always do that. I typically recommend giving people at least the night before or the morning of to cut up your produce. That way you're eating the most fresh produce possible or you're eating the most fresh meal possible. Definitely store your food in a closed airtight container and put it near the top of your fridge if you can. That keeps it colder and fresher longer. 
This applies to any juice, any smoothie, any cut up piece of fruit, or any salad dressing. I always recommend that you eat it upon making it, but sometimes our schedule doesn't allow for that. So I say, don't worry if you need to make it the night before or the morning of. You're doing the best that you can, and I think that that's great. And it's a much better option than eating something worse later or not being prepared and crashing and eating something that may not be as good for you. Tip number four, do not block your air vents and keep your temperature at a consistent degrees of around 45 degrees. Another tip that I like to do is I like to put my produce that I know is more perishable near the top of the fridge. And I do this because I know that if my air vents are moving from the top of the fridge to the bottom of the fridge, the things that are near the top are gonna stay colder and fresher longer. Because berries have a very short life, I put them at the top and this keeps them lasting at least a day or two longer. Tip number five, prepare as needed. Fresh is always best and you're gonna get the most amount of nutrients and the least amount of waste when you prepare as you go. You're going to have less food spoil if you prepare it right before you're going to eat it. Cooking your food takes a lot more time to prepare than raw food. And just keep in mind that fruit is fast food. Sometimes eating raw food is as easy as peeling a banana or biting into an apple. And the cleanup doesn't take that much longer either. If you're one of those people that likes to prepare their meals the night before or the morning of going to work, that is amazing. And that is a much better option than eating cafeteria food or not bringing enough with you to work so that you end up crashing and getting hungry and eating something unhealthy later. You'll notice that even juices or smoothies start to oxidize after a few hours. So if you're going to make something, definitely prepare it right before you're gonna eat it if you can to get the most amount from your food as possible. Fresh is always best and we always wanna get the most amount of taste for the least amount of waste, so prepare as needed. And my last and final tip, Real food does not last forever. Raw produce does go bad. Do not worry if you lose a piece of fruit here and there. You're always gonna have something that has a spot that you may have to cut off. You may have something in the box that goes bad. That's okay, compost it, give it back to the earth. Real food has an expiration date. It's not like a package that can sit on the shelf for two years and you can still eat it. That's not real food. You wanna eat food while it still has life so that it can bring you life and it brings you color and vibrancy and joy and love. Raw fruits and vegetables are the most vitamin and mineral dense foods on the planet and you want to eat as many of those as you possibly can to give your body the life that it needs to function properly. All right, you guys, that's it. Those are my six easy tips on how you can easily store your produce and make it last longer. If you guys need more guidance about which items go in the fridge or ripening tips, definitely check out the challenge page on my website at fullyraw.com. If you found this video to be helpful and if you're excited to try some of these tips, please give this video a thumbs up. If you guys need more tips, tricks, or recipes on how to go fully raw, please subscribe here to Fully Raw Christina as we have fun learning about living fully raw together. If you're participating in the 21 Day Fully Raw Challenge, be sure to like this video, leave your comments or even your tips or tricks below so that we can all benefit from those as well. If you haven't already, please remember to submit your email in the link in the description of this video so that you can get the free ebook at the end of the challenge. If you guys wanna see what I'm eating daily, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter, all at Fully Raw Christina. All right, you guys, I hope that this video has been helpful to you. I'm so proud of you guys for doing this challenge if you're doing it, and I'm just grateful to have you all here with me. Sending you all my hugs and my love. Bye. Are you ready? Here are my top six fully raw produce storage tips. <laughs> 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 this applies to any... <laughs> okay.